Okay, in this lecture we are going to look at KT analysis for problem solving. KT stands for Kepner Trigo. And given a complex problem, it's not easy to solve just using a textbook method. You need to for, uh, understand the problem, which is probably where a lot of people are like expecting a ready-made problem. But in real life, problems are not ready-made. You need to actually figure out what the problem is. You define the problem, then you generate solutions, then you make a plan, carry out an action plan, and then evaluate did your plan work or not. So it's a cycle of uh, iterative solution, not really like you solve. You have a problem and you have a solution. So what is the first thing you need to do? Define a problem. How do you define a problem? You need to ask questions and clear your doubts. You talk to experts. Just don't go around solving as soon as you see a problem. Don't just go around implementing it until you've spoken to experts and seen what other people have done and why uh, things have worked or not worked before. And then you visit and get a first-hand information. Sometimes the problem that you get may be different till you actually see the, what the issue is. Then you need to collect the data. That is measure the problem. How much quantity quantify the problem. And document the problem and put it in a file or a folder or document. Take pictures before and after kind of pictures of what you're trying to solve. And write it down precisely. What are you trying to solve? You add charts and data and sometimes just writing it down will actually give you ideas. And decide at this point if it's really a problem or something else is the issue. So for data collection, you need to hypo make a hypothesis. Okay, this is the problem. This is how we're going to solve it. And then test the hypothesis really valid or not. Then brainstorm. Brainstorm means talking to people or your friends or your colleagues. And writing down several solutions, not just one solution. Then for each solution, you evaluate the cost of the solution. What happens if you don't solve it? What happens if you delay solving it? What do the people think about it? What are people outside? What are their opinion about the problem? And then you need to see what is blocking you from getting to the solution. So usually people have mental blocks and most common ones are people are not even willing to accept a problem. They are just used to living with the problem. And second one is thinking inside the box. That means they think, okay, this is the only way to solve a problem. Sometimes the problem may be solved by thinking out of the box. A new revolutionary idea may actually solve it. And the other ones are like passing the bug. That means basically it's not our job. It's somebody else's problem and they need to fix it. And you need to avoid the blame game. It's not the person or the last person's fault. But it doesn't really matter whose fault it is. The problem needs to be solved. A lot of times people don't want to get into it because of failure, fear of failure. I'll be fired if this fails and just ignore the problem. That's a typical situation in a lot of organizations and governments. And then it's a new problem and people have fear of the unknown. Uh, they don't know what, what they're expecting and they don't know what's going to happen. And you can't imagine what's going to happen. Your imagination is blank. you never done this before. So that stops you from doing it. But if you don't do it, somebody else will do it and then you will be left behind anyway. And then there are communication issues like you can't explain, you cannot understand and other people are not helping you because for whatever reason. So from your, your inaction and you want to get into action, how do you do that? One is that like you meditate on the problem, you sit down and calm down your mind and sleep on the problem. Next day it might be easier to solve. Research the problem. Talk talk to people who are involved who done things before like that go to library internet see what other people have done go to youtube look at stuff what people have done find out experts and call them up there's no harm in asking somebody at the worst at the worst they won't have time or they may charge you but talking to experts sometimes does help if they really actually if they actually done the work before then you come with an action plan you make an action plan and then you do the the job is to big, big, uh, break up a bigger problem into solution to small task. And then you draw a dependency graph. What is a dependency graph? It says, okay, task 1 depends on task 2. So this has to be solved first and this will come next. Then find out which are the critical tasks. Task critical means basically that the, the problem will uh, not be solved unless the critical tasks are actually solvable and solved in time. And then you need to make a time estimate. Make a timetable. Say, okay, this task 1 will take one week or one day. Task 2 will take 2 days after that is done and then draw a graph of like dependencies and times. Then make a budget for the each task. How much is going to cost? Who is going to do it? Endless help. Like ask people to help you and do it. You can't, sometimes you can't do it alone. A lot of times you need help from people to do it. And what if some task doesn't work out? What if say there is a roadblock or something? You need a backup plan. Some alternate methods of doing things. 
Then once you have a plan, you execute it. Make a proposal. It's not like you make a plan and you'll start solving the problem. You know, make presentations, get feedback, get management support, and get people with the right skill sets. It's not like everybody has all the skills to solve a problem. You need to find people who can actually do the work. Then you make a team. And then you create communication channels. So make sure your team is aware of what are the goals and how to get done and what are the timelines. A lot of times uh, people are not even aware in the bottom layer of the workers, not aware of what the original plan or why people, why they are solving the problem or what the timeline is. And then you visit the site and talk to the affected people. It's not enough to just pass on a problem and ask somebody else to solve it. So how do you measure? So these are the different ways of measuring uh, a problem and solution. So in this case, you find that uh, you f this is your what you measured. It is reliable, that means all your data is very close by, but it's not valid because you are far off from the, the bullseye. And in this case, your measurement is all over the place and somewhere in the middle is on, so you don't know where it is. In this case, you, you all over the place and you also off the mark. And the final case is measuring, you are in the center right mark and all your measurements are very accurate. So you need that. When you have some data, you'll have to say which which one is it, and you'll have to guess because you won't. Nobody will come and tell you is both reliable and valid. You have to figure out by yourself. So how do you implement a plan? You make a daily. You make a to-do list. You make a list of things to do, and then tick off as items are done. Create a schedule, and make sure the schedule is available to everybody to see, either on email or phone or on a chart or put it up, and keep notes of work done because at the end suddenly you won't remember who did what and when it got done and how much it cost. So it's very important to keep notes as you are doing the work and what happened in between. Take pictures or whatever you need to do. All right, documents. And once the work is done, you need to evaluate it. And you need to write a report. And you need to write a caveats, which are maintenance plan. What happens when do you need to wash the thing or clean it or whatever needs to be done every year. And then even after you've done it, you'll be, you'll be shocked at how many people don't know about it. They just think something happened. You need to give presentations, put it on email or make a PowerPoint slide and put up the a chart saying that this was done and this was the things and share credit. If you don't share credit, next time you will not be, nobody will help you. And then update the accounts. If you have spent money or you need to set, settle accounts with your vendors, you need to pay up. You can't just say, okay, the work is done now, let somebody else be there. That's not right. You need to actually update the accounts and celebrate. Make sure that people are happy and, and the work was completed on time. So basically you can apply it to any method, any kind of problem you have. And then uh, you need to find your own problem, how to improve something effectively, your studies or cleanliness or water quality, who will collect the data, who are the experts, what are the bottlenecks, who will define the problem, what are the solutions, draw a chart. And there's another way of solving a problem and this really works for even smaller problems. Just by writing. Just keep a notebook and write down what your problems are. And just by writing every day, you'll find that half your problems are solved. It just writing just helps you organize your thoughts. So write in your notebook the problems you want to solve. Put and then put points next to it. Then up like points for how how much is it the possible, how much is not possible, the pros and cons, as they say. And for each you calculate the time involved, the timeline, what are dependencies. What is the cost of each point? And what is the risk of failure if something goes wrong? And what are the benefits if you solve it? Okay, so references just go to Google and look up the lots of data on problem solving methods. Thank you.